Alright guys, what's up? Um, this is the tank. Um, I did a lot to the tank. As you can see, I added some Corylas. I re-aquascaped it. I did a lot to the sump. I'll talk about the sump later. But, yeah. This is the tank. Um, I don't have any new corals or anything. I'm just trying to fight this green hair algae. It's just... It's just a pain in the butt. I've been in the fight for about a month, maybe. And it's, I am winning the battle. I can say that fairly, that I'm winning the battle. So, I'll give you guys a chance to enjoy it real quick. Back up a little. Um, I re aquascaped because. Um, there was tons of little snails and stuff, and I got rid of them. And you can see that there's like barely any snails. A lot of them were dead, so I got rid of them, and I forgot how the rocks were. So I was like, okay, this is a big deal. So I was like, you know what? I was watching New York Steelers videos for a while, and I came up with this design. I based it off, I based it off his rocks. Um, so thanks to him, I got a better aquascape that looks natural, and it is better for the environment of my tank. And I have way more space for my corals and stuff, which is way cooler. Because this tank is basically going to be coral dominated. If I'm going to add a fish, I'm probably going to add one more, maybe yellow tang. But that's about it. No more fish for me. It's going to be all coral. That's it just coral so yeah I cleaned up the back walls I left that little speck there because it has purple coral line and I am desperate for it um I have some on my overflow too I got two 1050 Corylas and 1050 stands for 10,000 no no not 10,000 1050 gallons per hour and these guys are monsters. They're just throwing the water around. It's great. I mean, I love it. The tank is looking awesome. Um, let's go to the corals real quick. My mushroom. In my last video, I was talking how it had, like, little baby mushrooms growing and stuff. And that's it right there, baby mushrooms. Um, you can see one at the bottom. One at the top one at the other side so that's pretty cool I found out the name of this coral right here it's called an elegance coral and this little clownfish right here is hosting in there and I've been noticing that he's turning black which is pretty cool he's just going up in value I have never seen that happen to my other clown so that's pretty cool to me this is my starburst polyps or star polyps or whatever they're called I don't know this is my frog spawn it has three heads in my next video I'll be showing you guys like a nighttime video so I can show you guys the three heads it has this is the <clears throat> the firefly chalice and if you look at my old videos I think he got bigger I mean he got like a white rim around him which shows growth and stuff but I can see like little, like what he used to be and what he is now. I think he got bigger. And he's just dominating that rock right there. Um, this is my candy cane coral. Let's see if I could get a good shot of him. This guy is like the hardest guy to capture on camera because of his neon color. Yeah, so you can see that he officially split into two. Um, I'm trying to see if. He has another mouth in the middle, but I don't know if he does. I don't think they grow like that. I think they split from each other. Like, if one splits, the next one splits. Kind of like meiosis or mitosis. Something like that. I forgot what it is. So, yeah. Um, so, I re -aquascaped. Based it off New York Stilo videos. Shout out to him. Thanks to him, I started up my tank. Inspir inspired me to make these videos so yeah 
check out his videos. They're very, very knowledgeable. I watch his videos every time I got a question or something, and he has good videos. So yeah. So this is the sump. I changed a lot in the sump. I mean, it's just everything is just totally different. Got a skimmer. I put in a bubble trap and stuff. So. So what happened was I had two bubble traps, and I had to tear this one out because my reef octopus protein skimmer didn't fit. So I was like, okay, this is not good. So I tore this guy out and left one here. And I put the reef octopus in here, which was a big hassle. He was, it was just really big and hard to put in there. And I raised it up with some egg crates. Right now it's just raised up so the nozzle's outside the water. But once I get it broken in, I'm gonna fine tune it. And I'm gonna check out some videos on that because it's a cone skimmer, so. Yeah, I'm going to check out some videos. This is my refugium rock. I used to have a refugium in here, but the reef octopus dominated it, so I had to get rid of it. I mean, I was excited to have a refugium, but, you know, what are you going to do? Oh, well. Um, so I guess I still have the rocks. I mean, it's still good to have live rock, as much as rock as you can. And this is Fiji rock. It's very porous. You can see it. It's like very porous. It's good stuff to filter your tank. I had another one in here. I got rid of it because it was just too big and I don't want to cut it. It's just a beautiful rock. I don't want to put it, put him in the top tank because I like how this one looks already. So I just left them out. Um, this is my return. And if you notice, there's a crab in here. I don't know how he got in here. He was in here before, so he somehow made his way over here. Who knows how. So let me explain what's in this return. I got my phosphate um, reactor um, outlet. It goes straight into the tank. It goes nowhere else. Straight up there. Comes from here. Straight up there. I'm trying to have the least amount of hoses at the top. Maybe the return and the, the outlet the overflow and the return. So this is my return pump in there, there's a UV sterilizer, that's all the same stuff from my old videos. So yeah, that's that. Um, this is the Reef Octopus. This guy's a monster. It's been running for about a week and for the bio load in this tank right here, the two fish, I think that's the right amount of waste it should be pulling out and it's just breaking in too so it's not even fully operational yet um this thing's really quiet and the sound you're hearing is actually the phosphate reactor pump of the phosphate reactor it's like uh, yeah that's that sound um the only sound this reef octopus makes is the splashing from the water right now i have it running right at the neck water levels right there and it's Pulling out some fine bubbles. If you look at it, and it's just pulling up all the gunk. So let me zoom out real quick. Um, that's the silencer, which actually surprisingly works. Pretty impressed with that. I fit my heater back there. Um, you may be asking, why is it set to 66? Why isn't it set to 78? The reason why is because all these pumps and gadgets and stuff in the tank and up there and down here, they all had add heat to the tank and especially the lights. The lights, I think, add the most heat to it, and especially the metal halides and stuff. So I think that I should set my... I was experimenting for a while. I mean, I, I just kept setting the heater down, 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 and down. So now I set it to 66. And the thermostat in that heater is just not good, so, I mean, I said it's a 66, and it's been running pretty well. I mean, the tank is at a steady 78, if you look at this right here. It's my old school thermometer. And I can't get you to read it for some reason. Um... Yeah, it's set to 78. You can see it. The right side's Fahrenheit. 
Um, so yeah, it's it looks at looks like it's 78, and if I go to my electronic thermometer, it's at 79.0. What happens is in the morning, at night, and in the morning, it's at 78, and then the lights slowly increase the temperature about a degree or so. The highest it goes 79. Right now, for the tank, it's about midday. So this is the uh, highest light spectrum of the day for the corals. So this is like when they're almost all opened and stuff. But some of my corals haven't opened up all the way, like the mushroom and the elegance. But everything else looks like it's opened up all the way. So this is like midday for the corals and stuff. Um, so let's talk about the power sources and stuff that I changed. I changed this right here, the the whole little thing back here too. The reason I changed it was because when I was fixing the sump and stuff, I was when I was like making it, water was splashing back here and it sizzled all the electronics, water current was going into the tank and that's not good. I, I got really scared that everything would die so I shut down the power for about two days. I got rid of the um the power sources and I went out and bought this and I set it as far away as far away as I can from the tank and only thing back there now oops, lens cap only thing back there right now is the ballast and my timer and the so this side this outlet right here I mean this power strip I should say this controls the lighting and the Basically the lighting, that's it, and the fan for the lighting, and it's directly connected to the timer that's in the wall. And this side's all filtration, and power heads and stuff, so the big ones UV sterilizer and all that, so yeah. Middle halides are running good, Odyssey really came through with it. Um, I was reading a lot of good reviews on the light, and... I, I read that it catches on fire. I mean, I don't know what's up with that deal. I only run the metal halides. I don't run the actinics or the LEDs. Because I think it over... Um, you're adding too much light to the tank when you do that. And so I got rid of it. So yeah. So now it's just the metal halides for me. It's good enough. 250 watts. That's about 5 watts per gallon. It's good for me. So yeah, thanks for watching, please comment, rate, subscribe, um, like the video if you like the tank, um, sh go check out New York Stilo's videos, in the description I will be putting a link to the octopus skimmer and the Corylas where I got them from, the Corylas I got off Amazon, and if you sign up for Amazon, and you start the free trial on the Amazon Prime, they give you free two-day shipping. So I got the Corylas. I ordered them on a Friday around 12 a.m. I got them on Saturday. So good shipping. Amazon really came through with the Corylas. So yeah, thanks for watching. And let's end on a good note of the Flame Angel. So that's it, and goodbye.